Well, the Cape is the premier collegiate league in the summer for the, the top collegiate players. Other than the 2008 year that we went to the World Series, my first year uh, up in the big leagues, I mean, it was probably one of my most um, memorable summers. Good memories is nothing new for visitors of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. It's the goal of vacationing families every summer when they cross the canal. But the goal of the college baseball player spending his summer on the Cape, a stone's throw away from both the beach and the majors, is different. For them, Cape Cod is not their escape, it's their opportunity. Do you yourself feel any added pressure to perform this summer? No. Um, you know, the coaching staff does a great job of managing expectations and just, you know, making sure we have fun every day. One Cape League legend in particular who's mastered the art of a good time on the baseball field is Chatham A's manager John Schiffner, who admitted that being in the Cape League is one of the two greatest experiences of his life, the other being his own college baseball career. What what novel thing are we going to say? A's team? Uh, I, no, I was just thinking bad stuff. There's a television camera right there. <laughs> All right, we'll go A's on three. One, two, three. A's. A's. There we go. The former Providence Friar is also the winningest manager in the history of the Cape Cod League. I call it the great equalizer. If you can come to the Cape Cod League and perform relatively well, you have a very good chance of making it a certain distance in professional baseball. I knew that it was the best summer league uh, for uh, college players, and I know that every college player dreams of uh, coming here in the summer. As a matter of fact, my dad played here a number of years ago, and. Uh, I mean, I'm just uh, grateful to be here. Kevin Biggio is from Houston, Texas, where his father Craig starred for the Houston Astros, and he's just one of many guys from outside the region who have an easier time adjusting to the off-speed pitch than they do to the local seven-day. Uh, the setting's a little bit different. It, it rained the other day, and you don't you don't get that too much in California, so had to get used to that a little bit. You know, I'm like the conduit. I tell them, hey, don't worry. That, that, yeah, don't worry. A grinder tastes good. It's okay. They're gonna. Oh, I coach my host family is gonna give me a grinder for lunch. What's that? <laughs> Don't worry about it. They're pretty good. They stay with families, which is another another uh, very nice thing to have. And really, when they stay with the summer, the summer families, they, they, those families kind of adopt the kids and really follow their careers and when they go back to college. So it's a very special relationship. And, and obviously, the baseball and the competition is, is first grade. Oh, it's invaluable. The experience, the camaraderie, the friendship, the lifetime friendships that are achieved. Yankees closer David Robertson can certainly relate. In fact, he may be the only player in the history of the Cape Cod League to improve his Major League Baseball stock, win a Cape League championship, and a playoff MVP award, then list none of the above as the best thing to happen to him all summer. We were at a, a local Irish pub. It was like karaoke night and uh, just got to know her there and got her phone number and called her a couple days later and we've pretty much been inseparable ever since. She really wasn't a big baseball fan. She thought that uh, I wasn't good enough to make it to play uh, professional baseball, so that's why I was in the Cape. Cape Cod is where David met his wife, Erin. I actually said, when he said I played for the Cape League, I didn't know what it was and he was describing it to me and I said, Oh yeah, my dad I think does that. Now David is an all-star and a World Series champion for the New York Yankees. So Erin, the Massachusetts native, and her family did have to switch a few allegiances. You know, our whole family was die-hard Red Sox fans at this point, so it was a very, very difficult, sticky situation for me. Um, but uh, you know, she came to some of the games. She enjoyed it. We had a good time. We, you know, we spent we were pretty much together. The entire Cape. It was great. You know, I think the biggest thing for us is looking back at it, we were so naive. We knew nothing about how important that summer was to both of us. I mean, our future and you know, David playing, that played such a big role in him signing with the Yankees. And Robertson is just one of many to take advantage of the opportunity. Donaldson, Bryant, Schwarber, Keuchel, Wong, Crawford, Utley, Ellsbury, Bradley Jr., Harvey, Sale, Springer, Frazier, Braun, Teixeira, all played in the Cape League, and all of them probably had impressive baseball stats yeah. while there. But even though the numbers they put up on Cape Cod directly contributed to the numbers in their present-day bank accounts, to the guys that played, that wasn't the true treasure of the Cape Cod League. I just remember going to, um, I want to say her name was Miss Marianne, but uh, it was where Todd Frazier used to live, and um, a bunch of us would always, she had a big house, and a bunch of us would always go over there and hang out. That summer in particular, my son loved airsoft guns, so the players would come over and after the games and shoot each other with airsoft guns, and it was pretty hilarious because you know, they just loved it. The place where I lived, uh, and, and my roommate, who became a, a godfather to, to one of my children, uh, we lived in Osterville, 
uh, and worked for and lived at the home of a general contractor. That was part of our, our day job. And uh, I just think back to a great experience playing against a lot of great players. Had a great experience um, in 1984, but I also remember it was an extremely tough summer because that was the, um, the summer that my mom passed away. Um, and I remember going back out uh, the day after a funeral and, and playing and have just a tremendous amount of support. We would always have camps for kids before all the games. And I just remember going to, uh, getting up, getting out there early in the morning and going to a camp all day and then going with a few friends and, and getting some lunch and pretty much going back to the field. So we were at the field all day, which seems kind of crazy now, but you know, at the time it's just what you did and you enjoyed it. I got hit in the head. I got a line drive off my head while I was in the Cape League. I kind of remember that. Just a lot of fun being around the guys. Our coaches let us know it was around the city that we lived in and uh, the transition kind of just kind of fell into, into place uh, a little easier than, than I thought it would. The best talent in the country was there. First time exposed to wooden bats, so it was the best barometer for scouts. The worst thing about Cape Cod, we had to go to work every morning at 7 a.m. after late night games. And for me, I was working at a country club, cutting grass, doing errands. It was no fun. By the time I got to the game, I was already gassed. So I, I quit that job the last month, and I really went off and got myself into the first round of the, of the next year's draft. Why is it, Coach, that the players that have played in this league seemingly all leave with such fond memories? I think it's the uniqueness of the host families and the community get the community involvement, the, that, that entire thing, the community involvement, because they're all small towns. They embrace the kids that come here every summer. And, you know, some of these host families take you in as one of your own. To have an opportunity to see where you stack up against some of the best players in the country and that you can propel yourself in the eyes of a major league organization, it's a great opportunity, great place to play. I, I loved it up there. I had a great summer. I, I met a lot of good people and had a wonderful time and just enjoyed playing baseball there. I said something to my son the other day. I said, if you ever get the opportunity to play there, I would encourage you to play there because you'll have a blast. It was a great experience. I mean, I think it's something that if, if anybody ever had a chance to do, it'd be uh, well worth their time. It's Norman Rockwell is what it really is, if you think about it. You put it in those terms. It's just such a neat, neat experience. The, you know, the people hawking the, 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 the popcorn in the stands and they're, you know, they're selling little things and, you know, it's just a, it's just neat. It's very, very unique and I think because it's, the towns are so small, I think it makes it even more unique because they really, really embrace the kids. I went into it with the, the mindset that I was going to have fun, have a great time playing in the Cape and, um, and in turn I, I had one of the best summers of my life.